Amen. Hallelujah. Lean in. Lean in on Jesus. Hallelujah. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. Hallelujah. God inhabits the praises of his people. Hallelujah. So let everything. So let everything. So let everything that have breath. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him because of his goodness and his mercy towards you on today. Praise him because he is the great I am. Praise him because he is a miracle worker. Praise him because he is our refuge and our strength and a very present help in time of trouble. Praise him because he woke you up this morning and started you on your way. Won't you give God your best praise on this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, Oak Grove. This is the year of more, more initiative, more for Mrs., more for our members, and more for ministry. How are we going to do that? We got to grow people intentionally engage them in activities that involve the five purposes of the church. Worship, ministry, evangelism, discipleship, and fellowship. Hallelujah. And with that, we can surely do more, 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 and more. This is our call to worship. You are now in the hands of our deacon ministry. Amen. Good morning, Oak Grove. It's a wonderful day. It's a wonderful day in the Lord. Yes, it is. Because we have three candidates for baptism this morning. God deserves a hand clap of praise for that. As we always say, we know that baptism represents three things, death, burial, and resurrection. In a moment, each one of these candidates will be asked to hold their breath which represents death. And they'll be submerged in the water, which represents burial, and then be brought up again and resurrected as a new creature in Christ. Amen? Amen. So first, we have Sister Zakaria Hayes. She's 20 years of age. In obedience to the great head of the church and upon the profession of thine own faith, I baptize thee, my sister, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Our next candidate, is Kiviana Fain, 26 years of age, giving her life to the Lord. Upon the profession of thine own faith and in obedience to the great head of the church, I now baptize thee, my sister, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Grove, our next candidate, it's Brother Mark Jones. <laughs> All right. He's 45 years of age, giving his life to the Lord. In obedience to the great head of the church, 
and upon the profession of thine own faith, I baptize thee, my brother, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Well, heaven is rejoicing today. Uh, those three that have come so their souls may be brought back into the God's folded arms and they might be blessed here going forward. The best decision they could have ever made. So we thank God today for those. Let us pray. Father God, we come right now, Lord, just to tell you thank you. Father, we bless your name on today. Father, we thank you for those that have come. Father, Lord, that they may be brought back into the, uh, the, the arms of God and those souls may be saved. Father, going forward, Father, we just ask you to continue to bless them, surround them with people that will be always encouraging in their faith walk. Father, we ask you right now that you would continue, Lord, to bless them. And now, Father, we ask you to come into this service today. Give us a blessed word, Father, that we may be... We may be doers of your word, Father. Continue, Lord, to keep us as only you can. Father, we know that you're still able to do anything. So we know that today. So, Father, we ask you that you would continue to bless us. We ask you right now that you would continue to bless our man of God today. Continue, Lord, he, we, he may me stand. That he may proclaim the word, Father, Lord, and it will go forth for your people today. So we thank you for all that you do. All that you will do for us. this is our prayer in your son Jesus' name, and we give thanks. Amen. But please stand for our doxology. now in the hands of our music ministry, amen?
good morning, Oak Grove. Some of you act like you don't understand that God is glorious. He's wonderful. He is the Lamb of God. It was not the alarm clock that woke you up this morning, but it was God's grace and his mercy that woke you up this morning. You sitting there like you don't know that he's wonderful. You sitting like you don't know that he is the Lamb of God, that it was Jesus Christ that died for yours and my sin. He's glorious. He's victorious. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the great I am. But we sitting here like we don't understand that he is. Oh, you know it was only Jesus that got you out of your mess. You know it was him that made you victor or victorious. I'm sitting here and I'm looking at folk that don't understand who God really is. But I know you know that he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is victorious. He is the merciful God that died for yours and my sin. I just need you to sing a little bit more. Because he is glorious. He is wonderful. I don't know if you woke up this morning with your mind made up knowing that he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's wonderful. When he's gave you peace of mind, that's something to praise God about. Oh, come on, begin to praise him. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. It's in my spirit. Somebody got to get it out. You came here this morning for deliverance. You came here this morning for a word of the God. And you're going to get just that. Glory to God. Glory to God. this morning hallelujah this morning hallelujah this morning hallelujah this morning we thank you Jesus for your love and your kindness well good morning Oak Grove well good morning Oak Grove it is the first Sunday of the month and here are your announcements for the week first of all we thank the visitors that have chosen to come out and worship with us Ministers, we will be having four o'clock. A ministers meeting today, and then church, we will be having six o'clock p.m. service this evening. We will be having six o'clock evening service. Let me just tell you, if you don't come back tonight, you are missing a treat. Because when I tell you the spirit of the Lord is in that place on the first Sunday, God is blessing in that place. Amen. On Saturday, April 13th at 9 to 12 o'clock, the mobile food pantry will be at Oak Grove. We're needing all volunteers. On Tuesday, on Tuesday night, teaching starting, spring classes are starting April the 16th. And then on April the 28th from 12 to 3 o'clock p.m., our own pop-up shop over in the gymnasium will be going on. If you want to uh, sign up, 
you must see Deacon Dor uh, Dorsita House. And that's for those that have their own craft, their own business that will be set up over in the gym. This week, I will ask that you will keep uh, your prayers for Brother John and Marcia King for their four-year-old nephew who has passed away. And that funeral will be April the 12th. Minister James and Sharita Forrest lost an uncle. No arrangements have been reported at this time. Deaconess Normal and Deacon Cecil Terry uh, lost an uh, uncle, uh, Tracy. And then um, Sister Daphne Broom and her husband, they lost, Daphne Broom lost her brother. Service will be Saturday, April 20th at Thomas Chapter Missionary Baptist Church in Memphis. And then uh, Deacon and Sister Faison lost a great aunt. No arrangements has been uh, made at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, I would, would like for you to stand at this time as we bring on our own pastor and his lovely wife, Pastor Donna L. Johnson, anointed man of God. He brings great leadership to our church. He is an awesome man of God. He is the one and only Donald L. Johnson and Sister Rhonda Johnson. You, know, you may be seated. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I dare you just, if you, if somebody is sitting in front of you, just give them a, just give them a sanctified massage real quick and let them know it's good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's got to be sanctified now. It's got to be sanctified. It's got to be sanctified. If you close your eyes, you're already outside the will of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord one more time. To all of you, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, what about Lady Rhonda Johnson is in the house. We praise God for her. Yes. Mm. Thank God. Thank God for your continued prayers uh, for Sister Rhonda Johnson. And uh, you all know what she battles. And I appreciate your prayers. Those of you who have responded with a text message, with a card. Those of you who have fed us. Those of you who I have fed. Uh, we just thank you for your love and your support for us. Amen. Well, listen, if you're having a birthday in the month of April, come on, stand to your feet. Let us celebrate you April children all of you April babies look a here April babies Pastor Joe April all right well we have a special song for you that we want to sing we hope that it'll be a blessing to you all right y'all ready team celebrate you we celebrate you I guess she's the designated cheerleader today is that what we're right today's your birthday okay okay well this ain't today 
That was my question. Is today your birthday? If you are celebrating you and your spouse, you and your spouse, you and the man and the woman that you married, y'all celebrating a, an anniversary in the month of April. Come on, stand to your feet. I want to see all these. Look at them, look at them. Look at them, look at them. How many years? How many years? Seven years. Wonderful. How many years? Eight. Eight years. Wonderful. Got to get to nine. Got to get to nine. How many years, Mr. Grace? Okay, Mr. Thirteen. Brother Mike, how many years? Forty-three. That's what I'm talking about. That, yeah, that's just the greatest husband up there. <laughs> Sister Joanne, how many years? Five. Wonderful. Five years. Sister Colbert, how many years? Forty-three. Boy, that forty-three is doing it now. Mother, how many years? 43? Boy, y'all were making it happen 43 years ago. Brother Evans, how many years? 43? <laughs> how many you say? 18. 18. Wonderful. Sister Billy? 57? Woo! I love it. Brother, Sister Brooks, how many years? 26. Did you say 46? Get out of here. Well, you got to get married in Oak Grove. They last a long time. Will you help me again celebrate all of those men and women of God who have said yes to the dress? Amen. Well, God bless you. Listen, I encourage you. Those of you that are here, you're not, some of you all are not in your wife. Please don't be alarmed. Don't feel out of place or anything of that nature. We have to do a much better job of communicating to our church when we transition into the white. So if you're in your black, blue, gray, turquoise, lavender, lilac, whatever it is, I want you to know you're going to be all right, amen. I'm going to struggle if you sit there and be quiet with your arms folded. That's what's going to cause me to struggle. But going forward until we hear different, every first Sunday, we will be in our white attire. Even in our 6 o'clock service, you heard um, Minister Barnett talk about that, our 6 o'clock service. Our mass choir sings again, and we'll have an incredible time in the Lord. Amen. Well, listen, the choir is getting ready to come back and minister to our hearts, and then I will come back and share the word that I believe God has given us for this season. Amen? Amen. Come on, thank God for our mass choir.
Wow. Wow. Well, you might as well go on and get you some in. You might as well get you a little bit in. I'm telling you the truth. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Dance all you want. Dance all you want. Come on and bless him in the house, would you? Bless him in the house. I dare you to just wave at somebody and tell them you ain't the only one he'll take care of. You ain't. You ain't, you ain't the only one that he'll open doors for. You, you're not the only one that he'll turn it around for you. You're not the only one. God will take care of you. And you have to take him at his word. You have to take him at his word. God, we thank you and we bless you this time, this hour for an opportunity to share your word with these, your people. God, do it again. Move us from religion to relationship and membership to ministry. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It's in Christ we pray. Amen. Well, come on, bless God one more time with you. I would this morning that you would take your Bibles and open them to the book of Esther, chapter 4. Some folk would rather have houses some of them choose land some folks choose silver and gold oh these things and forget about them they're so, but as for me, I decided, yes, I have. I made him, I made him my choice. Come on, said the road may be rough. Every now and then, the going 
and the hills are so very hard to climb. I started out a long time ago. There is no doubt in my mind. I decided. Oh yes, I had best decision I ever made. I made it my choice. In the book of Esther, chapter 4. I want to commence reading at verse 12 and conclude at verse 17. And today I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Those of you that are able, we ask that you would stand in reverence and respect to God's word. Ezra, the book, the chapters 4. The verses 4, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Translation is English Standard Version. And it reads like this. And they told Mordecai what Esther had said. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther. Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai. Go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf and do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. And I and my young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king. Though it is against the law, if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went his way and did everything as Esther had ordered him. Bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk about a decision to make a difference. A decision to make a difference. I solicit your prayers, please. The people who make a difference in your life are not the ones with the most credentials. They're not the ones with the most money or the most awards. They are simply the ones who care. Archbishop Desmond Tutu of South Africa said, do your little bit of good wherever you are. It is those little bits of good when they're put together, they overwhelm the world. They make a difference. My brothers and sisters, I am here to share for the next few weeks how you and I, no matter who we are, no matter what our status is, God has put us here to make a difference. One of the things I am challenged with, and that is some of you all think you really make a difference when you're really just difficult. I'm going to try this side here. Some of you think you make a difference when you're really just different, but not necessarily make a difference. My friend and brother, in fact, he is my twin, Denzel Washington said, don't get movement confused with progress. Some of us feel like we're really making a difference when we're really not on the way, we're just in the way. And my brothers and sisters, it just takes one person to make a difference when their hearts are turned toward Christ and the needs of people. 
Well, let me help some of you all. Some of you feel like, Pastor, I cannot make a difference. I have a past, Pastor. I have issues. I have a past. I have some stuff on my resume that's not conducive for a Christian environment. Well, the devil is a lie because no matter who you are or what you've done or what you're still struggling with, you can't make a difference. In fact, I only need about two people to testify that with a bad past, you can still make a difference. I don't want you to shake anybody's hand, but just talk back to your boy and say with a sketchy past, I can still make a difference. And I know that God can use us even when Satan has misused us. And God can use us when people won't use us. I, I, I remember, I remember, I remember playing this little game with my sons. My sons, they played this video game. I don't play games in the house, but that's a different generation. I thought when you play games, you're always outside. But this generation, they're playing games. And so in my effort to build and strengthen the relationship with my sons, I'm playing, somebody shout, you can start over. I'm playing this video game with my sons, and they're playing Madden football. That's what they're playing. Now, I don't know anything about that. My football was outside with pigskin and some old cut-off jeans and some tennis shoes and an old T-shirt, and we would play in the grass until it became dirt and then move over to the streets. I got to find me a crowd here. But my sons, them, they're playing Madden football, and so they have remote control, and so I'm playing the remote control, and he's playing, and he says, Dad, I'm going to destroy you. And I'm like, dude, you're not going to beat me. I'm the dad, and I'm playing because I'm trying to build the relationship. I'm going somewhere if you just hold on. And while I'm playing the game with him, when I tell you that dude was beating the stew out of me, he was beating the stew out of me. And I'm playing the game and I'm still playing. I'm trying to figure out how do I get the football to pass. So when I look at the whole story of Esther, who is an orphan, who is in suspect territory, Esther is raised and trained by her loved one, her uncle Mordecai. And Esther has been given privilege. But the Jews, which are her people, are in trouble. And so when you start at chapter 4, at verse 1, you will hear Mordecai talking about Esther. We need to do something. Esther says, listen, you can't come before the king in sackcloth. Not with that kind of spirit. Not only that, you don't have access to the king unless, first of all, the king invites you or he lets out the scepter. And if he hadn't done that, you don't go before the king. Y'all keep that in mind. I am going somewhere with that. You don't just come before the king any kind of way. And in fact, it's against the law. You can lose your life. And he says, Esther, you got to do something, baby. Es Esther says, listen, he, uh, you, the back drop of the text is the king was a little salty with Esther and he said Esther I don't want to see you for at least 30 days 30 days 30 days I don't want to holler at you Mordecai says hey Esther do you think that just because you are in the king's palace that the rest of the Jews are going to miss out and you be okay? That's, it doesn't work like that. You, this is not in my sermon, but you got to be careful with the people of God getting caught up with the hands you shake of who we view to be the elite. Because sometimes we shake hands with the elite and we forget about the left out. When you know who you are, your surroundings don't change you. When you know who you are, when you, listen, last night, last night, last night we were retiring uh, Powell Gasol, Mark Gasol's uh, uh, jersey. And so all of the grit and grind players that played with Mark Gasol, they came back. And so I'm in this, uh, this uh, uh, elite area, 
and all of the players that used to play with Mark came by. And all I used to pray for all of them and teach them Bible study. But when they saw me, chap, man, I miss you, chap. Good to see you, chap. So they want to take pictures. I'm like, no, I don't have time. got to go to work in the morning. got to preach twice tomorrow. I don't have, I don't have time. Chap, just them Rudy Gay. Let me get a picture with you, chap. <laughs> Tony Allen, Mark Gasol, Powell Gasol, their wives and children. Zebo, let me get a picture with you. But when those millionaires got through and I saw, if you will, the common folk come, I grabbed them and said, let me take a picture with you. Because you can't lose who you are just because people around you are considered elite people. That's the whole message that Mordecai was trying to send to Esther. In other words, Mordecai said to Esther, you have to decide to make a difference. And so that's all I want to say to you, Oak Grove. I hope this sermon is making some kind of sense to you that our world is in trouble. We have to make a difference. And I appreciate us in our regalia, in our white, but wearing white don't make a difference. I appreciate the choir. Y'all knocked it out the park, but being a good choir don't just make a difference. Can't nobody greet and hug like the Oak Grove ushers and greeters, but that don't make a difference. You've got to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and you've got to be concerned about the people that don't enjoy what you enjoy. Am I preaching good? You have to stop looking over people just because you have put yourself in a certain class. So here it is, Donald Johnson. If I'm going to make a difference, let me give you three points and I'll be out your way. Do you have time? First of all, it's in the text. First of all, you and I have to raise our tone of voice. You got to raise your tone of voice. Verse 14 says, if you keep silent at a time like this, we have to raise our tone of voice. Why, why do I need to raise my tone of voice, Donald Johnson? According to verse 14, when you and I raise our tone of voice, when you and I stop being quiet, we bring provision for the fellowship. Look at what it says in verse 14. If you keep silent at a time like this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. Keep in mind, I, I should have preached this during Black History Month. Keep in mind the Jews are Esther's people. And she makes up in her mind, and Mordecai says, you can't keep silent when you see your people being mistreated. I'm preaching better than y'all talking. If I had known y'all were going to sit like this, I'd have still preached the same thing. When we see our people struggling, you just can't enjoy food and nobody else has food. You can't enjoy a place to stay when everybody else is out on the street. Wake up, Memphis. How in the world will you have a homeless population and we got millionaires walking around every day? We have to speak against prejudice we have to speak against our own biases we have to speak for the indigenous people we have to stop acting like we are the standard and forget about those who have seemingly not arrived if we keep silent, I love Pastor Joe. This is the, the scripture he used when he ran for judge. He says that if we keep silent, then the people will be destroyed. And my brothers and sisters, you and I, when we raise our tone of voice, we bring provision for the people. Second of all, we bring protection for our family. It's in the text again, y'all. Verse 14, if you keep silent at a time like this, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. Here it is. But you and your father's house will perish. Huh. In other words, 
when you and I decide to make a difference, we look beyond this present age only or everything we do is not for the right now. We have to think about the generations that's to come. It is what they call bridge builders. Because if you and I, if we don't say something, then what will our children have to look forward to? If you and I don't say something, what will the young women have to look forward to? Not only do we provide provision for the fellowship, but we bring protection for our family. Come on, men. It's the time for the men to stand up and be a covering over your family. It's time for men to get up before before everybody else get up and walk through your house. I don't care if you got on a tank top t-shirt, walk through your house and begin to bless your house and declare that not on my watch will the enemy have my house. You've got to protect your family. Oh, I wish I was preaching better. You we, have to, we have to raise our tone of voice. And when we do that, we provide provision for the fellowship. But then we provide protection for the family. When we raise our voice, we stop letting people use people. We protect them. We stop letting church members who feel like they have elite status mistreat other church members because they get their clothes from Walmart and you walk into a mart and got choice you're not saying nothing we have to protect those and not let people misuse them sometimes the deepest wounds can come at the hands of those in the Christian community sometimes the greatest hurt the most obstacles will take place because of people in church who got it twisted. Who think that positions mean power, prestige. And we forget that if it had not been for the Lord who looked beyond your crazy butt and still gave you a chance you would stop mistreating people and act y'all some of y'all not saying that I want to look dead in your eye and stop mistreating people because your great grandma was a member of the church I gotta go further I gotta go further when when we when we y'all blocking somebody you sit down sit down sit down you blocking somebody here sit down okay you can stand up you can stand up when, when you and I raise our voice, not only do we provide provision for the fellowship, we provide protection for our family. But in verse 14, you'll see you've been given a place of favor. It's in verse 14 again. If you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows if you have not come to the place in the kingdom for such a time as this. Esther was not the only woman in the land. But somehow, God navigated her life, slid her through the cracks, bypassed the traditionals, and put her right in the palace in front of the king. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but some of you are like Esther, you don't deserve a doggone thing. Could it be that God has given you a place at FedEx? God has given you a position in the schools. God has elevated you in a place. Not so you can just brag about what you have. But sometimes God puts us in position so we can help people get a position. Where you just wave at your boy and tell him I'm in a position of favor. I don't deserve it but God has given me favor. I don't walk like it but God has given me favor I'm just looking for about 300 folk in here that can testify that favors on my life yeah. 
He says, who knows? Who knows? You could have been put in this place for such a time as this. Wave at me and say, timing is everything. Some of you are wondering why you are where you are. You just got to take God at his word. And at the right time, at the right season, God will march you into your assigned place. And when he marches you in preaching here, Donald, is there anybody here waiting on their season? Shake your neighbor's hand and say, I'm not where I should be, but my due season is coming. I don't have everything. Everything I should have, but due season is coming. I want to drop a word I normally would do it privately but I've asked you to pray for her publicly Rhonda come here right there is good enough at the bottom at the bottom at the bottom I just don't want her to fall when she takes off You can't find what ain't there. So the doctors will keep sinning. So, so the doctors keep sending us to specialists the specialist because they looking for something we ain't looking for nothing we ain't looking for nothing because we're taking him at his word we're believing that God will take care of you and I need to tell about 16 of you all here that when God decides you heal baby you heal when God decides you bless you bless shake your neighbor's hand and say neighbor it's my season
church is open. The doors of the church is open. While the Spirit is in this place, there's somebody that needs to make a decision on this day that make a difference in your life. Do not leave this place when you're unsure about your salvation. Do not leave this place if you're not in the right relationship with God. This is a day that you have an opportunity to start over again. If you're not in fellowship with God, this is a good day to be absolutely 100% sure of the choices that you have made in your life. This is a good day. It's the first Sunday of April. Let's just be real. Some of us should have been dead and gone, but God has spared our lives. And we keep playing with God Sunday after Sunday when you know that it's time to make a decision about your life. It's time to make a decision that will make a difference in your life. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? While the blood is still running warm in your veins and you're in your right mind, it's time to make a difference in your life. Don't let this day pass by. Sure what you need. We have a prayer ministry that will pray with you so you understand exactly what it is that you need in your life.
Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, begin to praise God for what he has done in this place. Amen. 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 Good morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you for our pastor right now, for the word of God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask right now that you will restore his strength. Father God, everything that he has poured out to us, Father God, we ask right now that you renew him, give him a renewed spirit, and give him a renewed rest, Father God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Sister Rhonda Johnson, Father God. We thank you right now for what the doctors have not found. We thank you right now for her healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost, Father God, that you have touched her, God. And we thank you right now. Now, Father God, we thank you for those that have come to join with us and unite with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, come on, give, your, give our new members a hand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As they're continuing to get ready, you still have an opportunity to make that decision this morning. You still have the opportunity to come this morning. Amen. Amen to God be Amen. the glory. Amen. Do we have another one coming? Amen. 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 Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. I'm going to go ahead and get started. All I'll right. come back to her. Amen. To God be the glory. Minister Darby. Yes, good morning, Oak Grove family. First of all, we have with us joining, we have quite a long list. So as I call your name, if you would stand, please, so that we can see who you are. We have Honorable Minister Joshua Stargell. Stargell, amen, bless you. Brother Patrick Andrews, he also wants to have prayer. We have a, the Cleves family, the mom is Morgan, her daughters, she's, the mom is Ashley, her daughters Morgan and Jamila. Amen. We have Sister Christine Gary. She's coming to accept Jesus Christ today. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. We have Courtney Jameson who's coming to join by way of Christian experience as well. Amen. We have Marsha Morgan who's coming to join by Christian experience. Glory. We have Amber Cox, Courtney Caldwell, who's coming by Christian experience. We have our sister Tristan Washington, who's a candidate for baptism. Glory! Amen. We have sister Lakeisha, Lakeisha Liggins Hamilton, a candidate for baptism. Amen. I apologize. We want to also correct. Thank you, Pastor Jode. Uh, Morgan and Jamila are candidates for baptism as well. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. We have Sister C.J. Woods, who is here to join with us by Christian experience. Yes. We have Brother Markel Lewis, who is coming to join with us as well. And last but certainly not least, we have Sister Sierra Beasley and Markeela. Markeela is a candidate for baptism. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, Grove, are we happy about our new members? And what about our candidates for baptism? Glory to God. We are excited that you have decided to make Oak Grove a part of, you are a part of the Oak Grove family, and congratulations on our baptism candidates. God added to the church daily, 
such as, are we, shall I be saved? Are we excited about our new members? Our preservation teams are going to come. And if those for the have prayer, our prayer ministry will come for you. We'd ask that our officer would prepare themselves for our Holy Communion. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for Holy Communion, Father God. You said as Father God, that though we remember you, and we just thank you right now for the bread. We thank you for your dying on the cross. We thank you, Father God, for dying for our sins. We ask that you would bless this communion, Father God. And Father God, we just lift up the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. For the Bible says, let a man example himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that is eateth and drink unworthy, eateth and drink damnation to himself, and not discern the Lord's body. We would ask you parents that if your child has not been saved, that you would allow them not to eat and drink of the Lord's supper. Him I owe. 
Wash me whiter than snow. Wash me whiter than snow. Jesus, I own everything I have. I own my, 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 my life. I held my strength. I own to Jesus. I own. Oh, Jesus, pay. Snow. Oh, 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 oh. oh, to Jesus I owe everything I have. I owe help my strength. Jesus paid, oh yes he did, all to him I owe, thank you because he washes whiter than snow, yeah. We want to make sure, parents, that you look at the top of the label to make sure that, that, that your children are not drinking wine. The clear one, the my, 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 solid my, white my, one, my, is my, wine. My, 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 my life, my health, my strength, I owe. Oh, 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 to him I owe. Oh, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. All to 
him I owe. Thank you for the healing, Lord. We owe it all to you, Jesus, because there's nobody but you, nobody but you, nobody but you could do it. Everything that we have, we owe it all to you. Where would we be? Where would we be? Where would we be had it not been for you, Jesus? Oh, to him I owe. We love you, Jesus. 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 Oh, to Him I owe. One more thing, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. 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 All to Him I owe. And on that night when they was in the upper room, it was the same night that Jesus was betrayed. And they took bread on that night. And when they have given thanks, he break it. And he said, take, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. Let us take bread. And in the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. And on that night, it was a night that they began to praise the Lord. As we will do right now, let us begin to just praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may take your seats, officers. Thank you so very much. Wash me whiter than snow. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Awesome is our God. Awesome is our God. Our ushers are retrieving the debris. Ushers, thank you all so much. You are always in place, always warm and kind. Our greeters are some of the friendliest in the industry. <laughs> Amen. Lady ushers, men ushers, you all just do a wonderful job. You make a difference. Amen. You make a difference. Our sound, our sound team, they make a difference. They have to tweak here and tweak there. Turn it on, turn it up. Somebody don't sing as loud. But I would hate to have to do all this without them. You make a difference. Our media team, what's on the screen some of you don't want to be on the screen. Some of you live to be on the screen. <laughs> they make a difference. Our difference, our deacons make a difference, man. They, they make a difference. And God is adding to our deacons ministry, deaconess ministry. And then you being here, you make a difference. We're preparing to worship God in our giving. Our ushers are passing out the envelopes. It's a great time to give. Amen. It's a great time to give. If you're an electronic giver, we praise God for that. It's the seventh of the month. So everybody ought to have some money.
Come on, you first and 15 saints. Let me. Now, you can't be broke all month. If you're watching in our virtual sanctuary, we praise God for you. I initially had a challenge with people that decided to stay virtual and not come back into a sanctuary, but I just realized we're dealing with a different day, a different mindset, and that's going to be between you and the Lord, and I'll talk about that later tonight, just to opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. I love it. I want to be in church. Amen. I just want to be in church. Amen. There's a new statement in people's vocabulary that says, I'm not a people person. And I don't, I don't know if if I'm supposed to look at them in my crazy eye or what. I don't even know if they understand how oxymoron that sounds to say, as a person, I'm not a people person. It's kind of like you that eat fish and say, ooh, I don't like this fish. It tastes fishy. I just be praying for you and go on. I just pray for you and go on. I want you to see a blessing. Stand up here. Take a few steps, Pete. very eyes again we have seen God perform a miracle we're talking about we're talking about somebody who the doctor said amputation was a possibility they ain't gonna take your legs man The healing. Some of you all don't know just how deep his wounds were on both legs. And by his own admission, Pastor, I just didn't want to be around a lot of people because one, it was painful and there was a, a, a stench that came from it. I didn't want to be embarrassed. But Doc, you were never an embarrassment to any of us. None of us. When I travel now, 90% of the time, someone goes with me. And I went to Kansas City and Ed Polk and um, Robert House put him in the truck, laid the seat back. I said Ed, and she didn't say nothing. Times must be getting a little hard. And put him in the back of the truck. And they rode eight hours. We stopped at White Castle and had some of those laxative burgers from White Castle. <laughs> and man, we enjoyed the fellowship. And a few weeks ago, you was walking on a walker. Doc, now you walking without any assistance. Man, you a testimony, man. Sister Williams, Sister Williams, a few weeks ago, somebody saw you, and they didn't know you, 
And then it dawned on them that this is the lady that we prayed for. That was it a tumor with, on your brain? What was it? Tum, brain tumor that we prayed for and fasted for. And you can't tell she they even cut her hair, less known her head. Because when God does it, come over here now. I said, when God does it, God does it. So that's why I say to Rhonda, the Lord told me to tell her that this thing ain't going to take you out. It ain't going to take you out. I didn't know it until the last minute that the gatekeepers fasted on Wednesday. We knew we were going to the doctor. They fasted on Wednesday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I didn't get a chance to preach all of that. I can preach some of it next time I preach next week. But when you believe God for it and you never doubt, you just, you'll just see the move of God. And so with all of that, who wouldn't give to a God like that? And who wouldn't praise a God like that? Amen. Our tithes and our offering, we just believe. I did a series on that uh, and called A Responsible Giver. And that's what we are here at Oak Grove. We're responsible givers. We don't cheat God. We don't try to see how much we can keep. We just believe that our tithes and our offering, it belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And then we are in our aggressive campaign to pay off this church. Let me say something to the body of Christ. And finance team, I want you all to hear me. Um, I want you to hear me. If there's anybody out in the halls, I want them to hear me. I want them to hear me. Our plan, not our plan, we're paying off this building in three years or less. And that will go by in no time. But the Lord said, in the process of paying off this building, yes, we've made some budget cuts. We've reduced some ministries' budgets, everybody's budget, including mine. But we're not going to be short on ministry with all of our focus on this building. We still going to have to do many. Y'all hear me? I know what the Lord said. Y'all read 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It says, believe God. And you'll be blessed. Believe God's man and you're going to be successful. And I'm telling you, Oak Grove, that while you're giving your sacrificial gift, every member is giving an extra $25 a week. That will pay this building off. But in the process of paying the building, we can't stop doing ministry. Do we have to cut back? Yes, we do. But we can't stop doing ministry. Amen? We still have to function. And we have to function at optimum level even if it's not with the masses like we've done but we and the lord convicted me of that don't don't stop doing ministry just to pay a bill just to pay a bill we still got ministry to do amen and they, they'll tell you that i'm complying to all of the things i've asked them to put in place i am in compliance i am in compliance they ought to be shouting i'm in compliance i just want to be in order but the Lord, the Lord told me clearly that while we're paying off the building, don't get bogged down in that. Don't put ministry on hold. We still need books. We still got to have classes. We still have to do ministry. And we're going to do it. And we're not going to beg anybody for anything. What we're going to do, take him at his word, knowing that God will take care of you. Amen. You'll see our seven seeds of contribution up on the screen real quick. We're standing to our feet. That's how we give with cash, with check, with card, with cell phone, with computer. You can come by or you can send a, use a carrier. Whatever your focus or whatever your uh, method of giving, we thank God for it. You'll see our, our tithers declaration. If you're a guest in Oak Grove's house, we believe in speaking what the word of God says. Amen. So we're going to read that in unison. And in unison means what you say, what you say. Here, let's read. Lord, Lord I know that I can give my only my giving and my obedience, though this seed leaves my hand. 
I believe by faith it will never leave my life. I will trust you, O oh God, by honoring you in my by faith, I now stand in obedience to have. God, we thank you and bless you for the privilege of giving. Take our gifts and use it for the kingdom. In Christ, we pray. Amen. Do two things. Give God a praise. And then tell your neighbor, don't forget, Pastor Love Offering. Y'all looking at me like, did he just say that? I absolutely said it. <laughs> Angel, I, yes, I said it. Angel, that's my girl, I tell you. That's my girl. Mark, 45. I didn't know you was 45, man. Let me just be clear. Oak Grove, y'all have been good to me, okay? Let me say, Oak Grove, you all have been good to me. I have absolutely no complaints whatsoever. Come on, get it. y'all good to see you man well, Donald. hey man take your time baby take your time good to see you dog yes what's up more good to see you man That's she is, that's she is. Hey Woods, good to see you, girl. Hey sis Scott, good to see you. What a be Peggy Peg? Good to see you. Good to see you both. Crutchfield, good to see you back there ushering again, man. Glad to have you back on the door. Yes, sir. Long, long time member of the Old Grove Church. Listen, real quick, if you're a guest in our house, would you stand? We just want to say hello to you. If you're a guest in our house, we want to say hello to you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, girl. You ain't no visitor. 
If you are standing, then somebody is going to speak to you and let you know how excited we are to have you at the Oak Grove Baptist. If you're standing, somebody's going to say hello to you. They're going to hug you. They're going to put their arm around you. They may drop a five, a 10, a 50. You never know. You never know. If you're standing, somebody's going to speak to you. If you're standing, somebody's going to speak to you. Y'all just making a fool out of me, aren't you? Just... Y'all, again, thank you so very much. Some of you all sent plants for Sister Rhonda. That was so kind and thoughtful of you. And again, some of you all, Pastor, listen, let us cook for you guys. It is, man, Oak Grove, I promise you. And I joke about love often and all that. But in reality, Oak Grove has always been good to me and my family. And I always want to say thank you so very much. Last but not least, Pastor Evans is going to come. And we're going to celebrate these, uh, this family that has united and was baptized today, and then we'll be ready to go. Amen, amen. We had three candidates for baptism today, amen. amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Mark Jones, Zacharia Hayes, That's Zai. and Kiavana. Amen. With the family of these new candidates and family, amen, to Oak Grove, come on down. Amen. Our son-in-law, Anthony, these are his nieces and his brother-in-law. And then we have Deja up here. She's just sweet as she can be. Hey, twins. Hey, twins. Come on, can we celebrate them one more time? What about the choir? Did they knock it out the park? Man. Let me look at all of you in the eye. So when I don't see you tonight, it's going to be some trouble. Robert, uh-huh, there you go, uh-huh. Like he looking for Jesus. I wonder... And if I have to stare at you long, that's because I'm suspect of your attendance. Man, y'all were on point today, I'm telling you. You all make a difference. You all make a difference. Mothers, God bless you. You all make a difference. We are so honored to just celebrate the mothers of our church. You all make a difference. Linda Crutchfield, is that you back there? Just wave your hand, girl. We love us of Linda Crutchfield. Amen. Some of you new saints, y'all need to know who the old saints are. I'm telling you, some of these folk have been here a long, long time. And they are on the battlefield, not on the playground. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. We're getting out of here. Father, we thank you now and as we come to the close of this service. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for allowing us to make a difference. Now as we leave this place, wherever we're going, keep us safe until we all meet again.